Shit, I just kept going. Can you hear this? Ooh. We do it again? Yeah. Oh. I'm going to do an intro. Greetings, Internet. Welcome to But I'm Still a Good Person by Vince Nicholas. I'm Vince Nicholas. I'm joined by my sparkling wifey, Carolyn Nicholas. Hello. Hello, honey. Thank you for joining me in our bedroom atop our bed for our little program here. Okay. So today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you, my love. Thanks. You are a mother twice over. Three if you include Booper. Ah, three include... I, I don't include our cat. <laughs> uh, but um, you are not a fan of Mother's Day, correct? No, I'm not. What, why? What, what, what's your beef with the... Uh, with yourself, <laughs> with, <laughs> with the with the holiday dedicated to you, my love. Um, I I don't like the officialness, the mm. obligation of it. Mm -hmm. The um, every day is Mother's Day. The performative gestures. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do feel like I don't need a day to be acknowledged. Yeah. I. Okay, to be fair. I'm not a fan of holidays in general. Fairness on a <laughs> podcast, honey? I'm really not a fan of holidays, period. That's true. Um, but specifically, I really don't like Mother's Day. Hmm. And I, I think it's just because I feel like it's unnecessary and I don't... Yeah. I, I don't I don't think we all need to be obligated. Yeah. it uh, Because of... Uh, me personally because of the internet and the socials it becomes obnoxious that's another more recent layer to it all yeah is it's so annoying and you see like <laughs> on siblings day you see everyone posting siblings oh my and on God. Day, right. po no offense to well, that was a poor example perhaps i'll cut that out <laughs> so you see siblings on siblings day posting all their pictures today it started yesterday really yeah my friend's posting pictures of their mom or their own kids. Right. Hashtag made me a mom. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. It's it's you it, it it's it's a lot. It, it's it's nice on like a one to one basis or a personal level, but uh, if you include the entire World Wide Web, it's just overwhelming. And by eight thirty, I'm over it. Yes. I'm not liking any more uh, Mom's Day. <laughs> Uh, pictures and posts on the gram and then i don't ever post a picture so am i a bad person yes yes you well okay so we actually did put po both both post pictures onto the socials today oh, we did. on mother's day uh we went we walked to uh the movie theaters to buy movie tickets for tom cruise's war propaganda machine uh, where he plays a Scientologist <laughs> for L. Ron Hubbard fighting <laughs> Zeon. What? Zenu. Fighting, fighting, fighting for Zenu. Fighting Leah Remini. <laughs> fighting, fighting Leah Remini. <laughs> I, I, would, I would say fighting to free <laughs> but that would be in poor taste. Uh, I'm going to cut that out too. <laughs> and that uh, oop. Thank goodness for the editing button or we'd be canceled. But in, uh, so we took, we were out and about. We went to buy movie tickets. We got some teriyaki chicken. Uh, we had a fanciful day, uh, an adventure. We went on a mission. Uh, we both posted pictures from our day of just us. Like, hey, we're out here. We're, uh, you said we're going on an adventure. I said something to the effect of uh, Scientologist time Tom Cruise and his jet fighting mission uh but uh neither of us our pictures on mother's day were about mother's day so the nerve of us honey how oh. dare we uh are, are we being selfish <laughs> yay yes <nay? laughs> yes um but mother's day uh so luna got you a card yep lennox made you a beautiful butterfly yeah. At like 11 p.m. last night. He worked <laughs> on it for like three hours, right? In the middle of the night? Yeah. What What was that process like? Because he came in at like 1 a.m.? No, he, it was like 11.30. He okay. came in our room and yeah. I was still awake. Yeah. And he asked me for staples. Mm-hmm. We have a little stapler. It was empty, though. And he and I searched the house. We couldn't find any. Uh -huh. And he's, he's told me, I'm working on your Mother's Day card. Don't come in my room. You can't look. Yeah. Um. But we couldn't find any, so he said, oh, I'll just do it without. 
Yeah. And uh, he made a really pretty, like, it was it was a piece of paper cut out like a butterfly and colored beautifully. Um, and I was, I was really impressed. And it had a very heartfelt note in there. Yeah. Uh, saying you're the best mom ever, which I love you, honey, and you're a great mom. But I don't <laughs> think that's scientifically possible. I don't think he's actually surveyed every single mom in history. Um, but... Uh, I know I'm not a better mom than my own mom, so... <laughs> Wait a second. Uh, I got you an apron, actually... I got it a few weeks ago, and then I've been meaning to buy like just a, a, one of those little gift bags from Dollar oh. Tree, but I just kept forgetting. So I the yeah. other day I just I'm just it was still in its Amazon package yeah. <laughs> on our floor where it had, it had been for about a week. Yeah, in in uh, tucked away in a corner, but it, it was uh, it was uh, essentially trash on our floor. Uh, but I said on whatever day it was this week, I said I, I forgot to buy a bag, but I turned around. And I said, and I revealed it to you, and I said, ta-da. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's an apron with the big giant cat on it. Yeah, because we're cat people. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And a oop. Yeah, an apron uh, with a big, giant, gray, cute, adorable cat on it. Um, because a few weeks ago, we were at your mom, Liz Fisher's house, and you guys were cooking. And she had an apron on. Uh, she had an apron with sloths on it, right? It was super mm-hmm. cute, super cute. And I, I got, I just got the idea, like, oh, I want to get you an apron, a super cute apron. And you're a cat lady, you're a crazy yeah. old cat lady, <laughs> and I'm a crazy old cat man. Uh, so that's what I got you. And then, uh, actually, I think it was last weekend we both got our mom cards. Yep. That we were gonna fill out and uh, mail uh, via. The U- United States Post Office, uh, but the, there they sit on our uh, dresser. Life happened, or we we just got behind. We we forgot. Yeah, we dropped yeah. the ball this year. Yeah, uh, and you sent your mom a nice text yesterday. We saw my mom yesterday yeah. and spent some time with her. And then this morning, I sent her a long text, and I'm really hoping she and I can get together soon, and I can treat her to a meal yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I've been trying to call my mom all day. Uh, <laughs> she refuses to answer. She's or avoiding she, you. <laughs> she's out and about. That's what that's her alleged story. That's what she keeps uh, uh, telling TMZ. Um, but I, I can't get a hold of her, but I sent her a text, and hopefully I'll call her. It's about 7.30 p.m. Um but that's our Mother's Day. Uh, let's talk about yesterday, our Saturday. Uh, we went to the West Sacramento Rec Center, which was the first time that we went there. Um, it's a gym, but much more than gym. Rock climbing wall, huge pool with like a, a couple fun slides, um, tennis courts, uh, classes. Yeah, a whole gym for basketball dedicated, like a basketball court. Yeah, rock climbing wall. Um and it was very impressive. It's really nice. Yes, it is sleek. It yeah. is clean. Yeah. It it's super nice. I was very impressed. And has a big room for classes because you've been wanting to get into Zumba or whatever. Well, I like group exercise classes. Yeah. I forgot how much I liked them. Um, it's been a long time. Yeah, they have Zumba, spin, uh, yoga, stretching, weight training. And you did uh, stretching. Yeah, it was kind of a yoga strengthening hybrid type of class. Yeah. I went to that on Saturday morning. It was really difficult. Yeah. Well, first off, you didn't have a yoga mat. So you brought a beach towel. (laughs) Yes. Uh, You were keeping it very... uh, (laughs) Very... uh, Low, uh, low class, honey. Did anyone stare at you? Did they kick you out? Did you feel uh, be, uh, belittled and besmirched? I did. I felt the judgment because not only <laughs> I had this giant beach towel, but there's I didn't realize until I got there there's tons of holes in it. Oh, so it was all ratty. Oh dear. Holy. Oh dear. I was the only person without a you're, proper yoga mat. You're ruining our 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 name in West Sacramento, honey. <laughs> it's embarrassing. But I, I went on Amazon. I bought you one today. It'll be here. Uh, soon um but uh you and the but you so you did this class and it was you said it was a lot and you kept complaining about pain <laughs> right 
I was sore, particularly my gluteus maximus. Your your bootie. Yeah, it was very sore, but and it was the good kind of sore after yeah. a workout. Yeah, that's what you said. And you... it's been a while since I've had that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you kept saying, I feel pain in my butt, but I like it. It feels good. <laughs> uh, after the West Sac Rec Center, uh, we went to Walmart where we were super hungry. Uh, Walmart has chicken sliders uh, that they make there. Hot and fresh. Well, I don't know about fresh, but it's, it's sort of hot. It's kept in the warming uh, uh, tray cabin. Uh, but we bought a couple. So I was like, we were both hungry. So I said, we're going to buy chicken sliders and then just eat them right there. And that's what we did. We bought a couple chicken sliders. Check, did the self-checkout. Walked about 10 steps and just <laughs> started wolfing it down right in front of the Wetzel's pretzels. Uh, in the midst of the Walmart uh, madness. But uh, it was a good time. We <laughs> lived was. like kings. Um, and then uh, the only other notable thing is that we we almost always do self checkout. Well, our our process is that we do the grocery pickup, uh, but then you don't trust the Walmart <laughs> associates to pick your uh, your you uh, good strawberries and avocados. So yeah. we go inside for that. I gotta get my. I gotta pick out with my own hands and eyes. Yeah. My meats, my veggies, and fruits. Yeah. So we go inside for that stuff, and uh, and then we do self checkout. Um, and the only difference this time was like I picked, I used the uh, the scanner gun that they have at the self checkout, which was super super fast, super easy. I was like, why don't I do this all the time? And then uh, at, at one point during our checkout, I I pointed it at you, and I pulled the trigger, so the red button or the red light lit up on your arm, and then I said. It's ringing up as priceless, ma'am. <laughs> so cute. I spent 25 minutes writing that, honey. That was my best joke of the day. Uh, okay, so Walmart, and then we went to, uh, well, your dad, your parents, they live in a retirement community. Is that the proper yeah. term? I'm not sure, but yes. <laughs> Senior citizen community. Uh it's called Sun City. It's out in Lincoln, California. And your dad, there's all sorts of activities and groups and things going on. Uh, but one thing that your dad is doing is uh, he's in the Sun City Choir. I think the technical name is Lincoln Hills Chorus. Mm. So uh, a bunch of residents, uh, older people, because it's a retirement community, um, getting together and they do rehearsal and they sing and they practice for months Uh and and then they put on these concerts, and we went to one on Saturday. Uh, first off, we went to directly to your parents' house where uh, your mom fed us lunch, and which could best be described as tacos with cold cuts and pesto, and it was fantastic. It was so good. I, I ate two of these tacos. I could have eaten twenty. Every time I ate pesto. It, it's as if it's the first time I've ever eaten it. Yeah. And like, this is the best thing I've ever had. Yeah. And then I question, why don't we eat pesto more <laughs> often? Why don't we have pesto? I'm, I'm all, well, whenever there's like pesto as a, a pizza topping instead of just red marinara, I always opt for the oh, pesto. Yeah. Pesto's so good. But yeah, it was super good. Uh, Liz Fisher feeding us. Um, and then we went to the choir. It was, it was, it was on the, on the, sun city campus or area whatever um it's just down the street from where they live um and uh so uh yeah uh your initial thoughts feelings comments reflections my love it was really fun and very fun. entertaining yeah every song we were like stomping yeah. our feet snapping our fingers me and lennox were dancing I mean, within yeah, reason, you, <laughs> we stayed seated. The two of you were going at it. It didn't turn into uh, the finale of Dirty Dancing. <laughs> we weren't Patrick Swayze <laughs> right and Jennifer Grey. <laughs> do the lift, do the lift. Uh, but it was it was a rocking good time. Um, my uh, ideas, notes, observations, hot takes. That's my thing. Uh, so, Alan Fisher, your dad, uh, there was... And we just chose seats. It wasn't fully sold out, but it was near capacity. Or there, there were a lot of people there, uh, and it was in a, in a large room. Uh, but where your dad was placed on the stage, um, there was like a guy in front of him blocking my view. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, 
And he was wearing a pink shirt, too. Well, first of all, uh, the theme was rainbow chasing. Chasing rainbows. Chasing rainbows. So they all wore, it was a lot of pastel colors going on, which was added to the fun. Uh, lots of purple, yellow, um, pink, stuff Blue, like that. Yeah. Orange, yeah. They're all wearing uh, really fun colors. Um, but the guy in front of your dad was blocking my view of your dad. And I was like, hey, Mr. Pink Shirt Guy, like, you're ruining my view of Alan Fisher's beautiful mug. Okay? Like, what, what's the deal? What's the deal, man? Um, uh, I thought the music, musicality, musicalness was very professional. Like, there was arrangements going on and different uh, timing things and layering and texture. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not Dr. Dre, but uh, it was very, uh, it was, it was very well produced. Yeah. It was, uh, more uh just more i I thought it'd just be more simple i guess just more Mm. straightforward but there was there was a lot going on it was like a tchaikovsky concert honey i I don't i don't know (laughs) if that's a apt comparison but i was really impressed by um just well they they put in i was reading the little pamphlet that they gave us and they put in months of work three to four months Mm -hmm. of rehearsal uh so it was it was done very well and lots of uh lots of just good singers um good uh good masterful uh putting together this whole uh show um they all held had lyric books like these black books with the the lyrics in them they've been practicing for months do 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 they all need books I wonder too, it, is it just for appearances? Yeah. Or maybe sometimes you forget a note and you have to look down. Or do a few people need it, but for uniformity, everyone just holds one? So. I think that's it. Because if you forget a note, you got to look down. Are you going to find the, exactly where you are? <laughs> then you miss it. <laughs> in the, the piece in the, uh, in, the, in the song lyric book. Um, in the pamphlet uh, that they, they gave us. Uh, with just a bunch of information and the song lineup. Um, I kept screaming uh, from the back, play Freebird. Uh, but your dad, Alan Fisher, was listed listed as a bass. I always figured him as more of a tenor or an alto. Um, I, 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 I've, I figure myself as a bass. But Alan Fisher, I've heard him sing and I've heard him harmonize and he tends to go higher. So what's up with that? Any idea? I, th- I think he has the range to do either. Yeah. So I don't know if uh, he preferred the bass or maybe they needed more basses. So, yeah. And he could go to either tenor or bass. So yeah. Just, I'm not sure. Uh, there was the, the oldest guy in the in the choir. And the choir was about 30-ish people, 30 plus uh, people up there on stage. Uh, was a 95-year-old man. Yeah. 95. They had him stand up and he they acknowledged him. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. That was a trip. Like and he didn't look a day over ninety four, honey. Uh, but speaking of ninety four, my favorite songs. Okay. So uh they took the Paul McCartney classic, I guess the Beatles classic, uh when I'm sixty four, and the majority of uh, <laughs> the singers are above sixty four. So they twisted it to uh when I'm ninety four. I thought it was so fun yeah, and so jaunty and just very well done. That was one of my favorite songs, too. Yeah. And then my other favorite uh, song um, was at the very end. Well, they did it. They did a huge Disney medley, which included four Mary Poppins songs. Killed it. Um, But uh, at the very end uh, of all these Disney songs, which included Beauty and the Beast, um... Uh, they they get to uh, now it's time to say goodbye and I was like oh it's so cute <laughs> it's so cute because like I got all this like warm nostalgia um, from that Mickey Mouse Club right that's the show and uh, it made me think of Justin Timberlake and Britney <laughs> Spears <laughs> back in the day uh, but I thought that was just so fitting to end it that way and the thing is is that uh, every song was listed. But uh, that was not listed. It just said Mickey Mouse March. 
I think. Oh. Or, or it was something vague. Is that the title of that song? I'm not sure. Hmm. But uh, I was surprised and I thought it was done really well. And uh, a few few goosebumps, if you will, honey. A few tears. A few, uh, a few tears strode down my my this side of my face. Um, so walking around the the vibe there, the scene, I felt really young, <laughs> and and I realized we like we we were we we were like young. Like normally, I feel so old now. <laughs> in my, uh, yeah. Now I'm forty four, uh, but there I felt young, spry, virulent handsome if you will uh i so it was it was cool to be uh to bring the age down the median age down a little it was a real boost yeah it was it was a confidence booster it was a morale booster um there was an intermission and uh saw alan fisher just walking around i think he was getting some water and i and i went went up to him and he was with the, another choir guy um, they were together, and I went up to him, and I said, Alan, I'm your biggest fan. I've loved you for so long. Can I get a selfie? Can I get get your autograph? And he said, you're going above and beyond for your father-in-law, Vince. And I said, oh, thank you, Alan. <laughs> it was really cool, though. It was like seeing a celebrity, uh, like during a, like a, like Tom Brady coming into the crowd during halftime or something. <laughs> it was like, oh, I just saw you on stage. You were killing it. Um, uh there was one gal in the top right, our right, of the choir, uh, short hair, brunette. Uh, she looked like she was in her 50s. What? Yeah. yeah. Excuse me, are you here legally? <laughs> and I think, is she like the Charlize Theron of Sun City? Or, <laughs> or does she like, is she like the, the hottie? She's very popular. Yeah. All, all the guys are chasing that skirt. Um, but I also think, like, do you have to be retired? Maybe she bought a house in Midtown in 1964, and then she sold it for $3 million recently or whatever, and cashed out and uh, got a small little house out in Lincoln, like your parents, and uh, and is now retired and just living off uh, the fruits of the spoils of the of the overpriced California real estate market, um, but yeah, I I think she was, she seemed uh, just a bit too young. Hmm. Yeah. But maybe maybe she feels like we feel <laughs> we felt like <laughs> like she's like I'm the Halle Berry of Sun City Hills. Uh, oh, I mean Lincoln Hills scores. <laughs> um, there were very there was very little masking going on about uh. I was saying ninety five percent non masks. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah, and I mean, it was a, uh, it was a uh, bunch of uh, anti vaxxers, oh. out in Republican country. Oh, yeah, they they don't care. <laughs> they only care about themselves. They only care about their MAGA uh, <laughs> president, and they're gonna reelect him in twenty twenty two, twenty twenty four. Um. But uh, I I thought that was that was really nice, just not being masked. Um, the length was perfect; it was about ninety minutes, and that was with the fifteen minute intermission. Um, so it was it was perfect length; it wasn't too long. Uh, and we got out of there at uh, like three forty five ish. Uh, it was over, so I thought the length was superb. Uh, and then, as I mentioned earlier, one of the songs they played, they sang, uh, was. Well, they did a couple songs from Beauty and the Beast, right? Yes. I know they did uh, Certain as the Sun. And then they did the... What's the other they one? They did where Bonjour. The... Bonjour. Yeah. Bonjour, bonjour. How does that go? And that oop. What's the one where the, the, the clock sings? Do you know what I'm saying? Be Our Guest? Yeah. There you go. Oh. I thought you were looking for the title of... I am. Bonjour. I was oh, looking okay. for Be <laughs> Our Guest. And that oop. Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. And that oop. Be our guest. Be our guest. Put our service to the test. Na, 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 and let Disney do the rest. <laughs> na, 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 na. They played that. Uh, but uh, what, what they did was in between every few songs, they had uh, a guy and a gal stand up, give a few words about uh, upcoming songs and why they chose them, what they mean, etc. Um, but 
before the Beauty and the Beast uh, little montage, they said, hey, Beauty and the Beast was a real story, which I didn't know that. Did you know that? No. Have you ever heard that? I, I had not heard this yeah. t- the tale. Blew my mind. Uh, so they told a little story that the Beauty and the Beast, uh, the, the true story that the Beauty and the Beast was based on. And they showed a picture of said beast. And yeah, uh, if you've seen uh, the Michael J. Fox classic Teen Wolf, it, it looks <laughs> like that. The dude has hair everywhere, including like coming out of his cheeks and his ears uh, and his forehead. Uh, it's um, But uh, so I would like to tell you the story, honey. Okay. Uh, I think I copied it from where they copied it from. <laughs> I copied and pasted from the internet. Did a little editing with a little Judy Farah. But did you know? Popo. And a oop. Okay. So in the 1500s, a man named Petrus Gonsalves, although it'd be a boy. Oh, Judy Farah would have caught me on that. In the 1500s, a boy named Petrus Gonsalves was born in the Canary Islands. That's near Spain, honey. He was born with a rare genetic condition called hypertrichosis, also known as werewolf syndrome. At a young age, he was sent in an iron cage as a gift to Henry II of France and was at first seen as a mythical wild man. So he was born a werewolf. No. And then they, the Canary Islands, dear Spain, uh, sent him in an iron cage as a gift to King Henry II of France. Very odd. Yeah. Well, what would you think if you were Henry II? What would you think if you were Petrus Gonzalez? Oh, the poor kid was, must have been traumatized. Yeah, he uh, was. If I was the king, I would be like, why are you giving me this? Guy, yeah, this furry kid, exactly. This furry kid, <laughs> it's like, can't you just give me a cat? <laughs> but Henry II, however, discovered that Gonzalvi, there's a helicopter outside, Popo on the go go. Uh, Henry II, however, discovered that Gonzalvis had a quiet and calm nature about him and decided he would transform Gonzalvis into a true gentleman. So he looked like a werewolf, but he was a he was a chill dude. He was probably terrified. Yeah, that's why he was. He just sat there quietly. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna uh, my, mind my business and hope no one notices this werewolf boy in a cage. Uh, in the royal court, Gonzalez learned how to speak, read, and write in three languages. Wow. That's like one and a half more than me, honey. Uh, And his social station rose significantly. I could see that. So he learns to read, speak, and write. And then um, his his status. I I would think he'd become kind of a celebrity, like, and like the girls would be like, oh. Well, once again, I wonder what he's like (laughs) in bed. Is there hair everywhere? Oh dear, honey. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, or, uh, yeah, or he, he's probably a good man and he's a good person. He could be a good dad. It's like in the Michael J. Fox Teen Wolf when he plays basketball. Yeah. And he's super popular. Yeah. Yeah. On top of the van, riding around town. Yeah. <laughs> the brunette, Boof, and the blonde <laughs> were, uh, were chasing him and. And that, oop. I could see that, like, uh, like the hot felon became a, a thing <laughs> for women. So, like, a uh, werewolf guy gets VIP uh, club status. And oh, yeah. Like, Come on in. Free drinks. Because gonna... he'll bring in the ladies. Yeah, he's going to all the balls at the palace. Yeah, yeah. Uh, finally, uh, eventually, Gonzalez came to find a wife named Catherine. Aww. Uh, they had seven children together. Holy Toledo. He, I mean, he's a werewolf, but he does it like a rabbit. <laughs> uh, four of the children were born with werewolf syndrome. Hmm. Uh, they were sent as gifts 
to other European what? kings. Yeah. What? <laughs> I hope they weren't caged also. Oh my gosh. Maybe if you put a bow on uh, their, their hairy forehead. Oh man. Yeah. I don't know. The, this, this, is, this, this is what got sad. This is bad gift giving. It got happy and then it got sad. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, you need uh, you need the highs and lows of a of a conflict, honey. Uh, thus, the tale as old as time was born, and the famous love story of Beauty and the Beast was spread far and wide. So, it was a true story. Although they put up a picture of the recent Beauty and the Beast with Hermione, Emma, yeah. Emma Watson. Watson. Yeah, and the Beast who. Is is handsome AF dude? <laughs> like he's a good looking. Dude. He's super buff. First of all, he lifts. He probably goes to West Sac Rec Center, um, and he he's a good looking beast. Everyone prefers the beast in his beast form to his human form. Yeah, okay. I would be attracted to him. <laughs> uh, so the choir concert was a jolly good time. Yeah. Uh, so it was something different. It was something cool. Uh, not going to a, a movie, not going to a bar, <laughs> drinking beer, not watching TV, not watching television. Yes. Uh, yeah. Had a fantastic time and they're going to do, a, you went to the Christmas one with Luna. Right. Uh, five months ago, I guess. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Uh, and they're going to do another Christmas one. Yeah. Uh, I would totally be into that. Yeah. We should all forego again. Yeah. I love taking the kids. I was happy you joined me this time. So. Yeah. We'll be there again in December. Yeah. Uh, and then we came home and we got Little Caesars. Uh, we got the deep dish because you were craving deep dish for some reason. Well, I'm always craving Little Caesars. Yeah. And I've never had their deep dish. It's always our go-to because <laughs> it's cheap and it's close. And it's, it, I'm, it's good. It's consistent. I'm satisfied when I eat it. It's good <laughs> is a relative word. It, it all depends on your tone. It was good. No. It was good. It was so good. It was well, good. I wouldn't say so good. It, it was, was good. It was good. <laughs> uh, we got the deep dish with sausage. Uh, your thoughts, feelings, comments, reflections, my love? Well, it was not deep dish. Right. It was a inch and a half thick bread. Yeah. With a normal layer of topping. Yeah. That's not deep dish. Yeah. A deep dish is like a pizza casserole. <laughs> right. Like the thickness is all like the fillings, the cheese, the sauce, yeah. the meats. The dough could be thick, but you got to up the ante on the toppings also. Uh, the deep dish was neither deep nor dish. Discuss. Um, it was just, it was more carbs. Yeah. More calories, more <laughs> dough, more bread. Yeah. You and I both, you and I both ate m- pretty much just the toppings and so at the end of our meal you and i both had a giant each of our plates were filled with a huge pile of bread scraps yeah that we didn't eat yeah i had about two slices and then i was like i'm going keto Uh for the rest of this meal so i just started eating the top (laughs) which i mean the sausage wasn't bad i'll be honest um but yeah it was just too much bread too much dough uh not pleasant um and then we got the slices and sticks which uh is around uh pie and half of it is uh, pepperoni pizza, and then the other half is their uh, fa- fabled Italian cheese bread, which we like, mm-hmm. we really like, and it's five bucks. Uh, the slice and sticks was, I think, eight ninety nine, um, but Italian cheese bread is always super yummy, super good. Um, but the slices and sticks, well, thoughts, feelings, comments, reflections, my love. It was good. The cheesy, the sticks, the cheesy bread, yeah, was way thinner than usual. Yeah. So my deep dish was too thick, my <laughs> sticks were too thin, but they're still good. And they the topping is so yummy that the seasoning and the the cheese yeah. and the garlic. Yeah. That was the best part of our meal. Yeah. Was the cheesy sticks. Lennox ate about three slices by himself and uh nearing like in the middle of his third slice, he's like, This is so good, but I'm so full. <laughs> and but he kept taking bites. He he kept saying I want to stop, but I don't want to stop. <laughs> and then that's all he talks about for the rest of the meal. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to uh, <laughs> the hell that is my life, Lennox. You're super full, but you just want to keep eating. Uh, yeah. The, the the sticks part, 
the Italian cheese bread was, was not Italian cheese bread, but it, it was fine. I mean, if you dig the, the a thinner, uh, just more like traditional breadstick uh, appetizer or side or whatever, it's good. Um, but if you're craving the Italian cheese bread, which they sell it as half Italian cheese bread, half pepperoni pizza, um, it's it's a disappointment. But that too, I just started eating the cheese on top. <laughs> I was like, the cheese is, and the Parmesan and whatever, uh, garlic, whatever they throw on there, um, it's good. But I, I don't need all these uh, all these carbs. And this is after eating a. Uh, 200 carbs 200 grams of carbs um well part of part of the reason why i only ate two tacos at your mom's was i was like we might have to take a picture <laughs> uh with alan fisher uh and which we did um well someone else took it of us but uh we, we did a picture with uh your parents and luna and lennox uh so but after that i was like no more pictures no more pictures no cameras no press no press um, so I was like, we're going to dig in and, uh, yeah, we indulged, but deep dish never again, never again, uh, slices and sticks, never again, never again. Uh, I say we'll stick with their classic, uh, pepperoni and their regular Italian cheese bread. And, uh, yeah. And then, uh, I, I continued to eat and then I fell asleep and then your parents came over and dropped Luna off. But I was in bed by 9 p.m. <laughs> you closed the door, though, honey. I yeah. was in my underwear. They didn't see your bootay sticking up. Why not? I lift. <laughs> I'm buff. All righty. Well, are we done, honey? Oh, yeah. All righty. Well, that's the end of the program. It's been fun, but not really. Let's all try a little harder next time. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, review, and rate. Or don't. Do whatever you want. You're a grown-up. Make your own decisions. Do what's best for your family. Please be sure to use our promo code for Masterclass. We don't have a promo code for Masterclass. By the way, Masterclass is a bunch of videos of highly successful people. And then you watch them to be inspired or uh, take cues from them. Like you can ro watch Ron Howard block a scene and tell you where he places the cameras and the lights and how how he uh, directs actors and tells them what to do. Um but uh, if you watch that, you're not going to be Ron Howard, okay? <laughs> Just FYI. <laughs> but please go there and use our promo code so they know we sent you. We don't have a promo code so they know we sent you. Goodbye, my podcast friends. I love you. My wife and I love you. We hope you have a good day today and tomorrow. And sure, my wife may not care for Mother's Day, but she's still a good person and we're still good people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Thank you for caring. I hope you have a wonderful day slash night. Oh, bye bye. And that, oop. Ooh. We got chicken. Is that crispy, juicy, tender? I can't eat no longer. You want some?